first of all, definitely we have an outfit, organizational outfit in exile. But keep in mind, it's a fact, we are also on the ground. We are deeply, in many parts of Ethiopia, we are active. Our movement works not only through armed struggle, but part of the civil disobedience that you mentioned. So we espouse not only an armed struggle, but we embrace all forms of struggle, well, including with respect, civil disobedience. With, with respect, you, you are an organization which is deemed a terrorist organization. Deemed as a terrorist group by a minority regime that has been terrorizing and has committed acts of terrorism against the Ethiopian people. Shinbot Sabat has not committed any acts of terrorism against the Ethiopian people. These are facts. Deemed a terrorist organization and is outlawed inside Ethiopia. As I understand it, you inside the country operate with a secret cell structure. So you're not the people who've been on the ground organizing the, the, uh, the protests on the streets, the uh, uh, protests outside gas stations and, and other forms of civil disobedience because you're a secret cell structure banned organization. Huh? You're not making any sense, Stephen. What is the purpose of secret cells? Is it not to conduct clandestine activities? This entails intermingling with the people on the ground and organizing the population discreetly. Well, duh. My point is that there are groups like, for example, the Kiro group in Oromo, who have been on the streets, active youth movements, who've achieved real change. No, I think you have uh, your information wrong. Uh, the, we are on the ground. Yes, we are banned and uh, branded as a terrorist, but we do have structures inside Ethiopia undertaking and organizing civil disobedience, not only uh, self-defense armed uh, undertakings, but also civil disobedience. Yes, this is true that the Cairo and, and the Oromo areas and in other regions, other groups are and, uh, organizing and leading this uh, civil disobedience, but we are there as well. We are uh, in many parts of the country part of this process. Your movement is called the Ginbot Sabat movement, and you, as I understand it, have committed. Last May, you made this public commitment to, quote, depose the government by any means necessary. You talk to yes. me. Yes. Yeah, you talk to me about yes, arm, armed, yes. by armed any resistance. Means necessary me Armed by resistance. Any means necessary. Yeah, yeah armed resistance is not what has been happening in Ethiopia in terms of pushing the government to release prisoners and to change course. It is civil disobedience. And are you not playing into the hands of the hardliners in the ruling coalition when you talk about deposing the government by any means necessary? When we say by any means necessary, it means all instruments of struggle, all forms of tactics uh, we deploy to organize the people. That includes armed struggle. We have armed movements in the northern part of the, the country. And we also believe civil disobedience, uh, economic embargoes, and boycotts of all kinds to blunt the regime's uh, repressive arsenals, to erode uh, and to uh, weaken the pillars of its uh, repression. So we believe in all forms of struggle. When we say by any means necessary, we don't exclude civil disobedience as a very potent weapon to weaken the regime and to organize the people in this protest to uh, depose the regime. Where is your leader, the Ginbot Sabat leader, Nega Brahanu? Where is he? Professor Brahanu Naga is currently in Eritrea. In Eritrea? Yes. Yes, and Eritrea, of course, long-term hostile enemy of Ethiopia. Wrong. Eritrea has never been a hostile enemy towards Ethiopia. Fact. Eritrea has been made to be an enemy of the criminal minority regime in Ethiopia, due to its declaration of war against Eritrea and Eritreans, due to its occupation of Eritrean territories and due to the crimes it has committed against the Eritrean people. 
So to reiterate, Eritrea is not an enemy of Ethiopia, or the Ethiopian people. It doesn't look good, does it, when you, and I know you go to Eritrea too, you spend all of your time uh, not in Ethiopia, and not always in Washington, but much of your time in a country which is the most hostile enemy of Ethiopia. Well... Uh, Eritrea is the most hostile enemy of the regime in Ethiopia, not Ethiopians and Ethiopia. We disagree on that one. And, uh, you know, this uh, regime, especially the dominant Tigran, TPLF, uh, uh, People's Liberation Front, has worked with Eritreans to fight against the previous uh, military regime, communist regime. So why would it be wrong for us to work with Eritreans. Just makes me wonder, Don't you think it this makes a... me wonder about where your interests really lie. How much money, uh, does, how much money does the Eritrean government give your organization? I cannot speculate on that. Uh, they don't give us money, but they harbor uh, thousands of our freedom fighters in Eritrea because that's the only safe and secure place for Ethiopians. You know, this brutal regime can go at will and whim in neighboring countries, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Sudan, Djibouti, abduct and assassinate Ethiopian but, dissidents uh, but, and but, even but, journalists but, like yeah. you. So the only, the safest place for all those brutalized, persecuted Ethiopians is Eritrea. I'm just wondering how all of this sounds to the Ethiopian people. They, of course, will remember the, the years the of Ethiopian war with people, Eritrea. Uh, are the, we are the most popular organization, one of the most popular. The Ethiopian, we have millions of supporters in Ethiopia. I don't know if you have your data and information correctly or which uh, versions of uh, the reports. Uh, there are various reports from various entities that you are reading. But we have solid support in Ethiopia. And the Ethiopian people, they no longer see Eritrea and Eritrea people as enemies. It's the regime that has been, uh, you know, uh, at loggerage with uh, and also wants to, uh, the, has hostile intention towards Eritrea and the Eritrean government. Right, so you take, the side, the you, take, you take the side of Eritrea against your own government? It is not our own government. Our own government is when we, the people, elect under free, fair, uh, elections, our government. This is a dictatorial, tyrannical, brutal regime, a minority regime that has captured the state and the economy to benefit a few Tigran elites and their cronies, ethnic and political cronies. So this is not our uh, government. Until we, the Ethiopian people, like you in Britain, under free and fair election, we elect our leaders. This is not our government. Just seems and to that's me the sentiment of, that is the sentiment of the majority of Ethiopians seems to in me Ethiopia. You're going to have a problem if Dr. Abiy, uh, in his role now as Prime Minister, makes good on his promise, which he stated again just a few days ago, uh, to uh, end the, quote, years of misunderstandings with the Eritrean government. And to that end, we will play our part. There has been no misunderstanding. Everything has been crystal clear for a very long time. And that is, the minority criminal regime in Ethiopia has been occupying sovereign Eritrean territories for more than 16 years. With the support and approval of previous U.S. administrations, it has also been working tirelessly and in vain to weaken Eritrea. This is not a simple misunderstanding. But karma is real. Everything they wish to happen to Eritrea is happening to them. They find themselves at the mercy of the Ethiopian people. You're going to be in big trouble if the Ethiopian government reaches out a hand of friendship to Eritrea because you'll be bargaining chips and you and your fellow leaders of Ginbot Sabat may find yourselves without a home. <laughs> First thing to point out is, there is not going to be any reaching out this call for discussion or dialogue from the minority regime, through its new puppet minister, is nothing but the same old boring gimmick, that we have heard for the last decade, it's a desperate attempt to buy time and distract people, from the more serious issues facing Ethiopia. Second thing is, Gambot Sabat or any other Ethiopians opposing and fighting the criminal regime in Ethiopia, are not bargaining chips for Eritrea, whether Eritrea is by the side of the oppressed Ethiopians or not, movements like Jinbot Sabat and others.
will still continue their struggle, until they achieve their goals and reach their destination. Another thing is Eritrea is a nation of principles and integrity, there is no short-sightedness. So if you think that the oppressed Ethiopians are used by Eritrea as a bargaining chip, you are dead wrong. Well, we shall see when we get there, but uh, I don't believe so. First of all, the minority regime has to withdraw from Badim. As you know, there is a long-standing uh, you know, ruling by the commission, by Boundary Commission, which awarded Badim the flashpoint of the dispute and conflict that led to that bloody war to Eritrea. But uh, thus far, the regime has no withdrawn from Badim. Uh, these are, uh, according to the ruling, you know, sovereign territories of uh, Eritrea. That's right. After a couple of years of a bloody war caused by the declaration of war by Ethiopia in 1998, with the pretext being the Eritrean town Badmi, it was later confirmed by the Eritrea-Ethiopia Boundary Commission that was set up to resolve the so-called border dispute that the flashpoint of the border war, Badme did belong to Eritrea and is sovereign Eritrean territory. Many Ethiopians are now speaking up and speaking the truth. Whether they be located in London or New York or in Addis or in Mekel, many Ethiopians are calling for the regime in Ethiopia to withdraw from Eritrean territories, including Badme. <laughs> Good day, Ertrai. Solution to the loan, Ertrai, Ertrai, what I am. Pardon me, I couldn't call him in a salam. The man at her Kavina. 